Uh, Fuck, really, really good to be with you, with you all uh, today. Um, Shona and I, uh, we started the Port Christian Fellowship after moving into the area. Uh, it's been going probably two or three months now, but we've been in the area for, for 18 months. And um, Dad has specifically brought us into the area. Uh, we are looking forward to the challenge. Um, and really in the Holy Spirit, it's not really a challenge at the end of the day. Everything's very easy for Him. You know, I think sometimes we, we make uh, a meal of things um, where, you know, He says, my... My yoke is easy and burden light. And, um, you know, I think sometimes we let the flesh get in the way too much. But spending time before the Lord, I, I said, Dad, what do, you, what do you want to say today? Because everybody has you dwelling within them. If you're born again, you have the Trinity within you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit residing within each and every one of you. So, you know, I said, it's going to have to be a specific word um, for the group and the individuals. And what I felt go up the flagpole and stay there for the last two weeks, encourage them. Encourage them and talk to them about unconditional love and reinforce their identity in me. And uh, as the scriptures were rolling around in my head and, you know, for about two or three days, um, I sat thinking about it, uh, the dream was confirmed. Again, he said, unconditional love and just re- reinforce our identity. So here we are. And what I, want, what I wanted to share with you is as you start your journey and you're in first year, um, you've got another year or two to go. Uh, and then you've actually decided in your hearts now that you are going to set your lives aside and follow the Lord and preach the gospel, preach the good news of the kingdom, preach the good news of Jesus. And, you know, with a lost and dying world, you know, there's people out there that desperately, desperately need to know the Lord's love. Uh, they need to know that... Um, he cares about them and that he loves them and one of the things that has happened over the centuries is that the Lord's character really has been skewered you know his ways and his nature have been uh, misaligned by religion sometimes by well-meaning folk but the Lord is love and scripture is very clear God is love so whatever you think about God whatever you whatever picture you have you need to have this picture ask him to change your mind metanoia in the Greek you know change the way you think about this that God is love and in particular he gives us a an idea of his, or picture of his character and his love when he reads the scroll out in the temple in Isaiah, Isaiah 61. You know, and he says, this very day, you know, uh, the scripture has been fulfilled in your presence. I've come to heal the sick, open blind eyes, cast out demons. You know, and he says, this very day it's been fulfilled in your presence. And then you see him, the incarnate, God the Son, Opening blind eyes, healing the sick, casting out demons. You never see him put sickness onto people, ever, ever. But what you do see is you see him going around, listening to the Father, fully God, but fully man at the same time. Listening to the Father, and whatever the Father said, he went and did. He walks into an open air hospital, the pool of Bethsaida. Right? He walks in, all the sick people lying there, and he heals one person. When he asks the guy, and he says to him, you know, do you want to be made well? He says, well, there's nobody there to stir, you know, to put me into the pool where the angel stirs the water. And all the sick folk are waiting. 
boom, and he gets healed. He doesn't clear the entire hospital, open air hospital out, he just heals one person. But he's listening to the Father. What's the Father want to do today? And uh, as you step into this journey, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. I'm going to read this out for you. And then I'm just going to work with this for a little bit. Remember the opening scripture, God is love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. <clears throat> Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But God is love. So let's put this, let's put God in there. God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy. He does not boast. And God is not proud. He does not dishonor others. He is not self-seeking. He's not easily angered. God keeps no records of wrongs. God does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. He always protects, he always trusts, and he always hopes, and he always perseveres. God never fails. So as you go out, ask yourself this question, can you love unconditionally? Because the word love here is the word agape or agape. It's God's kind of love in the Greek. And it is an unconditional love. So as we represent Him, and as I share this message, I'm sharing it to myself first and foremost, as I am sharing it with yourselves. So I'm preaching to myself. It's the old adage, you know, one finger and three fingers back. So I'm preaching to myself here and asking myself this question. Can I love like this? Can I honor my wife like this? My children, my neighbor, the person in the street that I come to to share the gospel with. Not to win an argument, not to win a theological debate, not to put another notch on my gospel belt. Because this is God. This is, this is God's character. Yeah. And he loves us dearly. And he wants us to represent him well as we go out there. You know, he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. And I think this is what he wants to get across here today. Is you need to know... That you are totally, utterly forgiven. He keeps no record of your wrongs. When he went to that cross, your past, your present, and your future, until you breathe your last breath, was pinned to him on that cross. Everything you said, everything you did, everything I've said, everything I've done, everything I'm still going to do, was pinned to him. He says, I keep no record of your wrongs. As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your sins from you. And as he reinforces your identity in Christ, it's to set you free so that when you go out there, you can set others free. We don't regard anybody now after the flesh, only after the spirit. I wrestled for years, trying to say, Father, you know, look at David. Murder, adultery, but a man after my own heart. And I thought, how? 
How is that? Abraham, liar. You know, Moses, murderer. Saul, murderer. And the Holy Spirit came back and he said, because I don't look at your actions. I don't look at the flesh. I'm looking at the heart. And because you believe in me, because man, whoever believes in me, I declare them righteous. And once I declare something righteous, it's righteous. Apart from your actions. So everyone in you, every one of you here, including myself, you are born again by the Spirit of God, born from above. You've been declared righteous. He remembers your sins no more. So be encouraged as you go out there. Don't look at anybody as you preach the gospel to them. Love them from the heart. So Father, help me to love this person. You're going to get pushback. Make no mistake. It's not going to be an easy road. I mean, our ancestors gone by had terrible persecutions. It may happen to us. We, we fortunate in this age, we don't live in an age where we receive that kind of persecution. But you can have things said against you. Stories are going to be passed. You need to forgive quickly. Don't hold a grudge. And love. Just love. And out of that place of love, you'll change, you'll draw people in. Because people don't need religion anymore. They don't need rules and they don't need regulations. What they do is they need to see Christ in each and every one of us. And as you do that, you'll be like moths to a flame. And you start to build that family out there, starting with your own and moving out. So be encouraged, you know, be encouraged. He loves you dearly, 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 dearly. And he will use you to the level that you allow him to. The sky's the limit with the Lord. Nothing is impossible with him. So I'm going to leave that with you. <clears throat> I don't know how, how long I've been at it now. But I'd like to pray for, for, for all of you moving forward. Father, take each and every precious person here, Lord. And in your power, Father, and your might, touch their hearts touch their minds, touch their lips, Lord God, touch their eyes that they can see the individuals in front of them, not after the flesh anymore, Father, but after the Spirit. Help them to honor you well in life, in speech, in deed, Father, and in actions, in all ways. Father, help them to put the things to death that need to be put to death in their lives. Father, and I ask that you will empower them in such a way that as they move forward, it won't be just with eloquent words, but it will be with the power of the Holy Spirit, Father. Dunamis, with that explosive power, resurrection, life, healing the sick, raising the dead, opening blind eyes, seeing legs grow. Father, and I ask you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that you will back up their preaching of the good news to the world with signs and wonders, that you'll attest to it, Lord. Protect them, protect their families, Lord God, and help them to grow in character and help them to grow in love. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 If you were blessed by this video, why not give it a like? Also subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos.